Algebra 2 Honors Lesson 6-2. Here are the lesson's objectives. All right, our first example. So it's asking us to write this expression as a polynomial in standard form. Well, in standard form, that means that we're going to have to have the uh, polynomial in order from highest exponent to lowest. So it looks like we're going to need to FOIL all this. All right. So I would first start with these two. So I would distribute here, distribute here, or you could use the box method. So if you FOIL this right here, you would end up with uh, x squared plus 3x plus 2. And then you're going to take this, all right, and multiply it with uh, x plus 3. So now you're just FOILing all this now. So you would distribute right here. So that'll give you x to the third, multiply right here w plus 3x squared, multiply right here, plus 2x, multiply right here, plus 3x squared, multiply right here, plus 9x, multiply right here, plus 6. All right, and just combine like terms, so you would end up with x to the third, plus 6x squared, plus 11x, plus 6. So this is our answer right here. And then it's in standard form because it's an order from highest exponent to lowest. Okay. And you don't need to classify, so it's not asking us to classify. Example two. Now they give us the polynomial in standard form and they want us to factor it. All right, they want it in factored form. Well, basically just use what you've learned from chapter five and factor this. So anytime we're factoring, right, we're looking for the GCF first. So here it looks like there's a GCF of 2x. So you take out the 2x, you would end up with x squared plus 5x plus 6. And then this trinomial here, go ahead and use the x to factor it. 1 times 6 is 6. We're trying to get 5. So the factors that work, I believe 2 and 3. We're dividing by the a value, which is positive 1 in this case. So our factors are going to be uh, 1x plus 2, uh, 1x plus 3, and then don't forget your GCF. Here we go. So here's a polynomial fully factored out, okay, in factored form. Uh, example 3, we're finding the zeros of a polynomial. Well, we're finding the zeros here. The first thing you could do is you can always replace y with 0. And then here are our factors, and this is a nice problem because it's already factored out for us. So it'll be easy to find the zeros. So basically to find the zeros here, you're just taking each one of these factors and you're setting them equal to zero to find your solution. So in this case, x is going to equal two, all right, x plus one, set it equal to zero. So our solution x is going to equal negative one. And then x plus three, set it equal to zero. So in this case, x is going to equal negative 3. All right, so these are our zeros right here, OK? So pretty much the zeros, remember we talked about like in chapter 5, are the same thing as the roots or the solutions, OK? Uh, write a polynomial function in standard form with the zeros, all right? So they want a polynomial in standard form and this time they give us the zeros instead of us finding them. Well, if you know what the zeros are, basically all you're doing is you're taking these and you're putting them as bi or in binomial form. Just remember to do the opposite signs. So if the zero is minus 2, you're going to put x plus 2. If it's positive 3, you're going to put x minus 3. Then you have another x minus 3. And since they want it in standard form, we're going to have to FOIL everything. All right, or do the box method. So for these two, you would end up with x squared minus x minus 6. And then take this, multiply it with this, x minus 3. So multiply there, x to the third. Multiply here, you get negative x squared. Multiply here, minus 6x. Multiply here, negative 3x squared. Multiply here positive 3x, then multiply here, you would end up with positive 18. Then just combine all the like terms. Um, we would end up with x to the third minus 4x squared 
uh, minus 3x plus 18. Alright, here we go. So polynomial in standard form, okay. And the last thing we need to talk about are our multiplicities of 0. All that means is multiplicity, that means when a 0 occurs more than once, okay. Now, first thing we need to remember is whatever the highest exponent is, that's how many zeros a polynomial should have. So in this case right here, this, this a polynomial should have four zeros because the highest exponent is a four. All right. So we're going to find the zeros of this polynomial. So the first thing we're going to do is we could replace the f of x with a zero. So we have uh, x to the fourth plus 6x to the third plus 8x squared. Now, if we're factoring this, remember our first step is GCF. It looks like we have a GCF of x squared. Let's go ahead and take that out. We'd end up with x squared plus 6x plus 8. And then let's go ahead and do the x. All right, to factor out this and find our solutions. Remember, solutions and zeros are the same thing. 1 times 8 is 8. We're trying to get 6 in the middle. So it looks like 4 and 2 work. Divide by the a value, which is 1. So our solutions are uh, negative 4 and negative 2. And then remember our GCF, all right, right here was x squared. So anytime our GCF involves an x, you need to have 0 as a solution. All right. And remember, solutions all right, and zeros are the same thing. Now what you have to remember is, I only see three zeros or solutions here. But remember, we're supposed to have 4 because the highest exponent is a 4. So where, where's, the, where's the last all right, where's the last zero? Well, if this is x squared, that means that zero occurs twice. All right, so zero has a multiplicity all right, of two. All right, zero has a multiplicity of two. Okay, so that's what they mean. You check like your answers in the back while you're doing your homework. If it says a zero has a multiplicity, that means it occurs that that number of times. Okay. Uh, Let's take a look at this example right here. So we have for for each function, all right, find the multiple zeros. So right here, if this is nice, it's factored out for us. So if we take this, we know one of the solutions is going to be 2. And then right here, we're going to have negative 1 and x plus 1 squared, that means we're going to have negative 1 two more times. So what that means is negative 1 has a multiplicity all right, of three. All right, it occurs three times. Okay, so that's all it means to have a multiplicity.